Good afternoon. My name is Tom Tate, and it's my pleasure to have with me this afternoon Dr. George Crothers, who is the convener of the Clan Crothers Society International. George. Thank you, Tom. George, we're aware that you are the convener of the Clan Crothers Society International, but what does that actually mean? The convener is basically in a clan society as the president or the chairman of the board, um, and that's simplistically it. Now, when I go on the internet, George, and I, and I have a, a trawl through the web, I see countless numbers of official societies claiming to be sort of rich Scottish heritage. But, but tell me, you state that the society is an official society. What does the official status come from? I mean... Well, the, we are authorised by our chief, uh, chief of the clan and family, as the only uh, representative of Carruthers worldwide. And I suppose that makes us the official clan society. I see. So why is the clan so important to you? And I understand you've put so much into it. It's our name. It's our history. It's our heritage. And being a Scot... I think uh, as you get older, your heritage and past becomes more important and most certainly to pass on to the younger generation. So like most kids in Scotland, when our fathers told us stories growing up, we never necessarily listened to them fully. And it's only when they go that you forget the things that they've said and wish that they were still there to tell you. I hear a the Scottish weather's <laughs> it's a bit rough out there. It is. <laughs> oh dear. It is. No. It's not unusual at this time of the year. No, it's not. No, it's well, it's a summertime, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> now, having seen different uh, coats of arms on on the web, does the Crothers family have a coat of arms? So the, there's no family in Scotland who has a coat of arms. There is only a chief's arms. So the arms of Crothers. Um, which is not quite displayed here because this is my own uh, banner. I see. Um, yeah. But the chief's arms it are, if you look at the shield, which are which is basically the arms, the red shield, three engrailed chevrons, and two and two fleur de lis at the top and one fleur de lis at the bottom. So if you're an armiga, it, 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 at least two differences. So my flag has two chevrons at the top, two um, fleur de lis at the top. And a fee on at the bottom, and instead of chevrons and grail, mine's are chevronelles, so slightly smaller. I see. Now, does every clan have a chief? No. Um, at one time, every clan would have had a chief recognised. But some of the lines are now extinct, which means that the clans themselves are, are armigeris, meaning... Simplistically, they're, they're, they're governed by their armigers or without chief. Um, when a clan becomes official or officially recognised, is probably the more accurate way of putting it, um, the clan itself, through that chief, becomes a noble incorporation in Scots law and therefore is more inclined to be classed within clan society and clan culture as being a clan. I see. Uh, I believe that Clan Crothers has had a newly appointed chief, am I right? We have, yes, as of August 2019. Um, Peter Crothers, or Simon Peter Crothers of Hall Mains, was recognised and confirmed by the Lord Line as chief of the name and clan Crothers. Sorry, chief of the name and arms of Crothers. Because um, Crothers, depending on who you talk to, is either a border family or it's a border clan. My personal opinion is the chief sees it as a clan. Many people see it as a, who still live in Dumfries see it as a family. I'm kind of ambivalent to the, to the whole thing, to be fair. Okay. Now, you, you mentioned a, a lord, a, a lord lion, in your previous answer. Could you tell me who, who is the lord lion? So the lord lion is the Queen's rep representative in Scotland. He deals with all things heraldic. He's part of the Scottish judiciary, so any decisions he makes is a legal decision, 
which can be challenged, of course. Um, and in a few cases it has been, um, but in most cases the results have fallen in his favour. He, uh, he decides based on the genealogy and the petitions and the documentations presented to him whether an individual is worthy in the respect of a chief is worthy of bearing the chiefly arms. So um, most chiefly arms, there was something called the Lions Act in 1672, which um, James, the first of Scotland, decided that there was people using arms who were unworthy and that, that he felt that they should, should all be registered. Crothers being one who was still deemed to be worthy, registered their arms, which we are aware of, and it was John the Ninth of all names that registered it. Um, so our arms are pretty old, really. Goodness. Now, I assume, therefore, that the process of achieving the arms and getting the arms granted is quite an arduous process. <coughs> um, for an armiger, it is a matter of proving your descent. And uh, if Scots birth, it's a lot easier. If you're not of Scots birth, for instance, we just have one of our armigers granted arms by the Lord Lion who lives in Australia and he proved his lineage uh, back to the 1600s which gave him arms. Um, there are another couple of people looking at having their arms recognised through the Lord Lion. Um, but there's a few variables in there you know, that, that have to be met. You, at the end of the day you want to prove that your lineage is, and that your worthiness, for want of a better word, is acceptable to the Lion Court. So how would I know when a chief legally holds the title? They would become, or would be invited to become, uh, members of the Standing Council of Scottish Chiefs. Now, not all Scottish Chiefs are members of the SASC, but the vast majority are. And that's a reasonable indication. If somebody hasn't had an invitation to join, then they're not recognised as a chief. And the Lord Line has a list of all Scottish chiefs. Um, most chiefs of a, re of a reasonable sized clan would have supporters on their arms and that differentiates them from armigers who many armigers wouldn't have supporters on their arms. So what is the role of the Scottish Standing Council? They represent Scottish chiefs, chiefs of families, chiefs of clans and uh, work in their favour, so they would um, they would take their their uh, their side if they were dealing with any legal things that were affecting clans in Scotland, or they were potentially uh, people using clan names or clan chieftainships without any right to do so. But you know it depends on. Basically, they're a representative body of clan chiefs. Now, interestingly, George, my wife knew that we were talking today about uh, about the clan colours, and she's asked me to ask you: Do all Scottish chiefs still follow the male line? Scotland's quite advanced in this respect. <coughs> Many years ago, Scotland always followed the male line, and colours being no no different really. Um, but there are quite a few female chiefs now, um, Margaret area. Margaret Elliot being one, and the Countess of Mar being another, there's quite a few. Um, and where Carruthers comes in, we followed the male line all the way down until 1809, and there was a document which showed um, that John the Twelfth decided that whoever was of his body, e.g. male or female, would carry the chief's line all the way forward. So Carruthers went all the way down the male line, then it went to a daughter, and then to her son. So it kind of bounces back and forward. But we're done. We're back on the chief line, the, the male line, and have been for the last hundred years or so. So the clan Crothers is a, a legally uh, recognised body of of people yeah, yeah. with a with a, a legally recognised chief. Yeah, yeah. So do you have a tartan? Tartans are quite an interesting subject because uh, there are people that claim tartans that go way back into um, the mists of time. And in actual fact, family tartans, tartans assigned to families, um, came into their own only about the early 1800s. 
and most certainly border families never really had them. Um, the, the, the oldest border tartan that I'm aware of is Armstrong and since then many other um, border families have decided to register tartans. There was no Carragher's tartan registered in 2017. Um, so I registered a tartan which was given to the clan, I gifted it to the chief in the clan, he's adopted it as a clan tartan. Prior to that we were dis um, defined as a sept of clan Bruce and we were allowed to use their tartan. And being a Scot, as you know, you'll, uh, a tart is copyrighted to either an individual or a clan itself. So we don't own, we have nothing to do with clan Bruce tart, and it doesn't stop us wearing it. It doesn't stop us wearing Royal Stewart. But to have your own tart and recognised and registered is quite a big thing in Scotland. So does the tart belong to the chief or to the clan? Both. I see. By belonging to the chief, it belongs to the clan. I see. Now, what part did the society play? in having the chief confirm as the head of your clan? Um, we were the driving force behind it, really. Um, I started a Facebook page in 2007 to see if there was any um, support for us moving forward to have a chief. And uh, one of the first supporters was a woman called Dana Crothers Norton from Kansas in the US. And she was, she's, she's kind of been a rock, really. She's always been to my right hand side and uh, help me move forward through some of the darker times when you're dealing with these things. Um, so from there we started, we, we got the support, we started the society in 2017 in January um, based on the advice of people like Gordon Casely and I spoke to uh, Lord Charles Bruce uh, before we moved forward and to Lord Lyon and I spoke to Lord Clark. So, I took advice from a number of people before moving forward to make sure that the, the steps we were taking were, were based on firm foundations. Um, and then when we located our, ch our chief through the genealogy that was presented to us and after some, a total of 12 years of research, um, the current chief petitioned the, the Lord Lyon and the, and the rest is history, really. No. When I look again on the on the internet, I see the term ancient clans. Is the clan Crothers an ancient clan, or can it be described as that? I think I think all clans are ancient in the respect that they all got, they've all got to come from somewhere. If they have a, a chief of the line, most of these things go way back. I mean, Crothers came from it's a topographical name that came from the name of a, an old Brythonic fort, Celtic fort. Uh, held by held by the name of uh, Ruthers or Ruderich and the area, so the fort was called Care, and the guy's name was Ruther or Ruderich which became known as Care Ruthers for the area. People living in the area progressively took the name and um, that's where the name came from. So it's, we are a Dumfriesshire family, which is now Dumfriesshire, uh, in the southern part of Annandale and we've been there by name since at least the 12th century and indigenously going back to somewhere in the region of 500 AD to be reckoned. My own particular clan or family uh, were, were reavers, border reavers. I believe the Crothers clan too was a border reaver clan. We were our first chief of the line, uh, the House of Mousel, Crothers of Mousel. Um, so Simon Crothers. Um, was the last of the Mausel line, and he got killed in a border raid. Carruthers, like, we were on the West March, um, so the marches along the Scottish border were in, were in three positions, so West, Scottish, West English, Middle, Middle, East and East. And um, I think that the West March took the brunt of the English invasion. Um, I would like to say I'd put it down to the the M6, but people listening to this wouldn't know anything about the M6, so <laughs> okay. I'll leave it away. Now, in your previous answer, George, you mentioned that Lord Bruce. Uh, is there any connection at all between Clan Crothers and Lord Bruce? Just in the historical support that Crothers has given to Bruce, and when we were first along this, um, decided to go along this route, I was uh, lucky enough to be able to have a conversation with um, 
Lord Bruce, and I told him what we were doing and if he had any objections. And he was wholeheartedly in support of what we did. Um, the, the reason that we were classed as a sect is that in the 1820s, when King George came up and had his grand ball, and tartans became more in vogue, and Scottishness became more in vogue, then smaller, looser Arnegeras clans were assigned to the larger groups, partly because of commercial reasons. So the more people linked with that group, the more likely they were to buy the, the tartans, the brooches, and all the rest mm -hmm. of it. Um, and I, I've got to say, you couldn't be aligned to, you couldn't be prouder than, than the lineage that we have when the links that we have with Bruce. But I think we should be proud and be able to stand up in our own right each these days. That's why we've done what we've done. Now, George, the, the Clan Crothers Society International, the title suggests that it's worldwide. But where is the society actually based? And where do your members come from? So the society is based here in Scotland. And um, we have regional, four main regional groups, one in Canada, um, one in the US, one in Europe, and one in Aust Australasia and Oceania. Uh, each, each group has its own board. Each commissioner sits on the, the uh, council, the International Council, and we have executive officers that run the daily uh, run of the mill stuff. Um, so our members are worldwide, really. They come from all over the place. No. Samoa, for instance. Samoa, Zimbabwe, South America. And what are the benefits of membership? Well, the benefits of membership is that you are part of the society. You're helping the society grow. Um, you will get discounts on anything that is produced, any kind of merchandise. Uh, there's a journal that's sent out biannually um, called Thomas Septidellis, which is the clan motto. Um, and the ability to attend gatherings uh, under, our, under our banner, really. Now, George, you mentioned clan motto. What does the motto actually mean? So the motto is actually the motto of the chief. So the motto of the chief is Prompte Set Fidelis, which means um, ready and faithful. And the motto is, in this, as you know, in, in all Scottish arms, it's above the crest. So a clan badge, which many people who, if they're interested enough, are listening to this, you will know that within a belt and buckle sits the crest of the chief, and engraved on the belt and buckle is his, um, is his motto, Prompte Set Fidelis. So by wearing that, it shows, by using his motto, by using his, his crest, it shows fidelity to the chief. And Carruthers really only has one chief, and that's Carruthers of all name. So what, what do you hope to become, this, what do you hope the society will become in the future? Then? My hope is that it becomes a historical and genealogical um, keystone for the generations to come. And that we, I mean, we're talking at the moment of setting up a, a private site where the genealogy, the good genealogy, is kept and can be linked into one's program. Because there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, misappropriation of genealogy out there, people trying to join the dots. I mean, I always like to say, you know, if you join the dots and it's meant to be an elephant and all of a sudden you've come out with a rabbit, then you've done something wrong somewhere. And people skip lines to try and make themselves linked with uh, King Robert the Bruce or whoever, because there is that need. As an individual, I'm more proud of my own ancestors than I would be being linked to um, King David the Second or Alexander the First, because my family are my family, and that's what's important to me. I understand. George, it's been a, a long journey, 12 years, you said. Yeah. So what has been the highlight of that journey for you? The, the highlight was having the chief in the club. I mean, that was a, an end result. I mean, you know, we... That's why we started the, the, the journey and to attain that goal, mm -hmm. albeit it was arduous and frustrating and uh, not necessarily a straightforward path. But after 210 years, 
for Carruthers to have a chief again, for us to have our own town, all be adopted by the chief, um, for us to have um, supporters on our arms, for our chief to sit on the standing council. All these things, 12, 14 years ago, would never have been thought of. And, and I think, and, it, and it's not just down to me, to be quite honest. There's a lot of other people chipped in. Anthony Maxwell, our heraldist, um, as I've mentioned before, Gordon Casely, uh, Brian Wilton, the tartan designer and historian. You know, lots of people, once you start doing things the right way, the right people come in to keep you going in the right direction. So having a chief confirmed is a highlight and remains a highlight. Really. Thank you. George, thank you for giving us your time. It was a joy to share your passion, your knowledge and your honesty. I'm sure with your hard work, the future of the clan is in good hands. And I'd like you to just share with me a wee drop of uh, Golanetta with Slan. Slan. Thank you, Tom. My pleasure.